This presentation is about Lauren Isley and is designed to complement the readings in your textbook and on the content page. The goal here is to provide some sense of the person behind the writings, particularly the iconic star thrower parable that some of you might already be familiar with. Isley's work falls into many categories, but the at the most basic level he grew up in Nebraska and spent his career as an anthropologist at the University of Pennsylvania. Besides the Star Thrower story, he's also known for the 1957 book The Immense Journey, which will dis be described more fully below, and from which your two assigned readings, The Flow of the River and How Flowers Change the World, appear within. It is important to understand that Isley became involved with anthropological studies from a young age. That process began with his childhood in rural Nebraska near the banks of the Platte River. While this area might seem flat and uninteresting to many, it is actually very rich ground for fossils and remnants of prehistoric life. As a child, Isley spent much of his time exploring the banks of small rivers and crevasses in the landscape on the outskirts of his hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska, exploring places where artifacts could be found and where fossils could be discovered. It was an ideal setting for a budding anthropologist. Here are some paragraphs which explore the historical and anthropological significance of the Platte River and its surrounding areas. In addition to providing rich environs for dinosaurs, these regions also served as hunting grounds for prehistoric native peoples following buffalo and bison herds. Please take a moment to review these longer quotes, which describe the ebb and flow of oceanic waters and later the habits of indigenous peoples their hunt and their hunting patterns, all of which contributed to these fossil-rich terrains. These next slides are focused on Isley's major work, major literary work, The Immense Journey. With his keen anthropologist's eye, Isley explores the long, nearly unfathomable process by which humankind developed. A student of evolution as much as of ancient prehistory, Isley understood the significance of major changes in plant and human anatomy that enabled greater chances for survival across multiple epochs. This characteristic is shown in the reading from your textbook, How Flowers Change the World, and it shouldn't be any surprise that his Flow of the River essay, linked as a PDF on the content page, captures the crucial evolutionary jump from sea-based life to air-breathing land mammals. Here is a reasonably contemporary summary of Isley's book. Over 50 years old now, it still offers compelling reading, and I've had occasion to use select chapters in classes I've taught over the years. This preface from an edition released in 1962, five years after its original release, should capture the book's main subjects and explain its multifaceted scientific emphasis, while also providing some useful context in the comparison with Charles Darwin. Please take a moment to scan over these passages. Finally, You've also been asked to read a condensed version of Isley's famous Star Thrower essay. This essay is often misrepresented and adapted to multiple contexts because of its easy, easily oversimplified and moralistic message captured in the image of the starfish story that you see here. You're also linked below to many, one of the many video renderings of this message, which also captures that easily oversimplified character.
the full version of the essay, which I've linked you to as optional reading, offers a theme that is much more complex and appropriate to Isley's overall message about the long paths of evolution. Take a look at the longer version as you wish, but as long as you read the three assigned pieces, that's all that's required of you here. Once again, I thank you for listening.